As technology advances, so does our understanding of the world. Science can be an extraordinary thing that bestows us with the gift of knowledge, but with everything we discover come a myriad of new, difficult questions for which there are no answers. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at two amazing scientific discoveries and what they might mean for our future as a species. Reedite, a rare mineral, has been discovered in ancient meteorite impact crater. Our Earth produces tens of thousands of various crystals and minerals which have given us the ability to get where we are as a society. Some minerals, however, are rarer than others, and it is without a doubt that reedite is quite possibly one of the rarest minerals of all. Scientists investigated a mysterious ancient crater left over from a meteorite in Australia. After digging into the site, they uncovered the rare reedite, which only forms under very specific conditions when rocks from outer space collide with the Earth's crust with immense speed and tension. The extreme pressure creates reedite. The reedite discovered at the site of the Woodley Crater by Shark Bay in Australia is just the sixth time in history when reedite has ever been found. Dr. Aaron Cavosi from the University of Curtin states that reedite is actually a mineral progression of zircon, which is a relatively standard mineral and it's the sharp impact that turns it into reedite. Finding reedite at Woodley was quite a surprise, as it is much rarer than diamonds or gold, though unfortunately not as valuable. The true size of the Woodley crater is still unknown as it was initially buried beneath a layer of sedimentary rocks and has not yet been excavated fully. It is estimated to be around 60 to 120 kilometers in diameter. If the Woodley crater does in fact surpass 100 kilometers in diameter, it will be the largest meteorite crater in Australia ever found, as very few impact craters reach lengths larger than 100 kilometers. Dr. Cavosi explains, the significance is that once they get to be much larger than 100 kilometers in diameter, they enter a class of impact event that are large enough to cause mass extinctions and influence biological evolution. For instance, the large impact crater in Mexico that contributed to causing the demise of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago is 180 kilometers in diameter. This is why finding such an extraordinarily large crater is such a potentially shocking discovery. The reedite was under the ground for over 20 years. The researchers drilled core samples into the central uplift, with Dr. Cavosi saying the following. Central uplifts are desirable targets for learning about impact conditions. They bring profoundly damaged rocks closer to the surface and in some instances are associated with exploration targets. The discovery is owed to a certain Morgan Cox, one of Dr. Cavosi's honor students. Cox decided to examine zircon and its chemical and physical responses to pressures and meteorite impacts. It was this student project that provided the grounds for this crater's drilling and testing. Furthermore, the reedite that has been found is tiny, so much so that its traces are microscopic. As things stand, reedite lacks material values such as gold or gemstones, but not all value has to be commercial. The value that reedite holds is far greater, for it has value in what it can do for us in the future. Because it is so rare, we know precious little about it and the potential it holds for unlocking new cosmic doors in abundance. For all we know, reedite could be the next thing to advance our civilization. Venus is unable to sustain life. Often referred to as Earth's evil twin, Venus has been an object of fascinated speculation for eons. Recent studies have unfortunately concluded that Venus does indeed lack the necessary potential required for life to blossom on its surface. Recently, a study measured Venus's atmosphere's water concentration, and the results state that the heavy amounts of sulfur plaguing the planet's clouds make it absolutely impossible for life as we know it to form within the next millions of years. Of course, the knowledge of Venus's sulfuric rain and the scorching atmosphere is not anything new. We have known about its inhabitable nature for an impeccably long time. However, a 2020 research paper gave a handful of scientists false hope regarding the harsh wasteland. The paper in question claimed 
that the gas in Venus's clouds was not fully sulfuric, but that it actually contained phosphine, the same gas which produces bacteria here on Earth. As a result, it suggested that perhaps extraterrestrial bacteria were alive in Venus's clouds. If there was indeed phosphine gas and enough water on Venus, it would mean that life someday could evolve into life forms similar to us, with advanced cultures and civilization. John Hallsworth, a microbiologist, found an amazing terrestrial fungus back in 2017. This fungus could withstand humidity of up to 58.5%, which is known to be the driest possible condition ever recorded. Hallsworth argued vehemently for his belief that some of the most resilient life forms we have on Earth could theoretically withstand Venus's hot climates. Regrettably, the lack of water renders this hope impossible. Hallsworth commented about the low amount of water. It is more than 100 times too low. It is almost at the bottom of the scale, at an unbridgeable distance from what life requires to be active. Our planet hosts some truly astonishing forms of bacteria which survive the coldest or hottest conditions the Earth has to offer. From minus 40 degrees to as high as 120 degrees Celsius or 249 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite our bacteria's resistant genes, there is no way they could make it on Venus. These findings bring immense disappointment to the community of scientists dedicated to studying the acidic planet. Chris McKay, an astrobiologist for NASA who took part in the paper's writing, publicly stated that the findings were completely conclusive. Despite this, there are several space missions being planned for Venus, although hopes for life on Venus could be non-existent as the study proves its impossibility. In a news conference, McKay said, Our conclusion is based directly on measurements. It is not a model. It is not an assumption. The missions that NASA just selected to go to Venus will do the same measurements against temperature and pressure, and they are going to come to very much the same conclusions because Venus is not changing on that type of timescale. The research is not all negative, however, as the search for life on Venus brought back potential evidence that Jupiter might have life instead. The clouds of Jupiter were tested at the same time as the clouds of Venus, and found that the water concentration in Jupiter's clouds were superior to those of Venus, providing enough theoretical water to establish some kind of life. The amount of water amounts to 0.585, which on the water scale means it is just about the survival line. The temperatures of Jupiter's clouds average to about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, making them habitable for bacteria. In the words of McKay, Jupiter looks much more optimistic. But what do you make of these discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.